you know, and I worked at Empire, the record label for two years, and it was an incredible experience. I got to learn from, you know, a number of awesome people, but the CEO of that company to me is one of the most brilliant minds in music today, right? And so I got a chance to understand uh, the world as they see it and what makes their business model unique. But <clears throat> to be honest, I've never had a goal or desire to work at a record label. I felt like it was important for me to understand the business of selling music in a way that I did not at all. And I'm, I say that from the standpoint of um, on the media end, we're always asking for stuff. Hey, can we interview you? Hey, can you share this review we did on your album? You know what I mean? But in the grand scheme of things, media and PR, they're really the last two middlemen that exist especially since media, music discovery isn't taking place on media anymore. It's happening in streaming. Right. So media and PR can be very helpful. I'm not disparaging either, but I'm not sure how necessary or an absolute requirement they are in a way that it was 15 years ago, 10 years ago or so. Right. And so the difference between media and PR is that media has an audience. PR tends to not have an audience. Right. And so a lot of media now is starting to turn into PR where they're doing more marketing than they are critique. It's hard to find an album review that has a rating anymore. Mm. So many publications are moving away from the rating because the rating slows your money up. Wait a minute. You want this artist to invest ad space on one of your platforms somewhere and you listen to their album and judge it and you don't think it's that good? Yeah. Like. It makes people not want to spend money in this place where discovery isn't happening. <laughs> you wow. know what I'm saying? So like, there's a lot of homie stuff. So what that taught me was I could see who looked successful. I could see who was on top of these lists, but I didn't, couldn't see, you know, um, profitability. I couldn't see scale. You know, mm -hmm. I had no idea what, how many pieces or different people did something that helped propel this project to wherever it landed. You know, I had no idea what it felt like to work inside of a record label. Mm -hmm. Working in a record label is one of the most thankless jobs I've ever seen in my life. There's so many people who work inside of record labels that are essentially doing it for the gram. Like there's, like if there's, like everybody's goal is to have that artist thank them when that artist wins a Grammy. They mm -hmm. want Oh, and the winner is your artist. And then your artist gets on stage and says, oh my God, I can't believe it. Uh, man, this is so, man. First, I got to thank God, my mom, my dad, my sister. I love y'all. God, thank the label. I uh, love the CEO, everybody on my team, you know, some manager. And then you hear the wrap it up box music. And then they're like, uh, yeah, then all my fans got to go. Click. Oh. There's about 40 people who was just hoping, hoping for that shout out. And then nine times out of 10, never get it. And so there's so many, it's a labor of love that includes so many people who rarely, if ever, get thanked publicly. And if the project did, did well, in the artist's mind, the artist did it. Right. And if the project didn't do well, in the artist's mind, it's the label's fault. <laughs> you just don't, there's not a lot of props flying around from the places that a lot of people who work within a record label want to hear them. You know what I mean? And so that was a crucial thing for me to understand, but it was, it was opportunistic.